Hello. <laughs> hey, lovelies. I'm still getting used to this. I was not able to do a live for a couple of years, and I seem to be back. I guess I've been well-behaved for a while, and that's what I want to talk about today. So, this concept of sovereignty, it's a word that is being touted about uh, in mainstream media, even right now, and uh, is certainly one that has been very vibrantly represented in the truther community for some time. What does it mean? Right? To me, sovereignty has developed a very deep meaning. And I think when I first started to interact with this subject of like freedom, uh, I thought that it meant like getting my way, right? Like having the world be exactly the way I believe it should be. And I've come to develop, I guess, a more refined relationship to the concept of sovereignty. And these days I define it as not needing anything to change on the outside in order to access deep okayness and safety on the inside not easy. So this applies to love. It applies to dynamics with systems. It applies to pretty much anywhere that you might find dependency and that you might find control and manipulation and strategy and all of the ways that we attempt to meet our needs indirectly. I've also found um, that it's important to consider sovereignty as the metric for how we are making choices, right? Exercising our human superpower of choice without needing someone or something to be bad and wrong in order to simply say, this is not for me, right? So think about the last time you hated something that was going on in life, right? Like in your personal life or in life at large and you needed to blame and condemn that thing or that person in order to feel validated in your deep knowing that this is just not for you. What's on offer here is not gonna cut it, right? And so how can we simply allow what is to be accepted and even approve of it in ways because you can connect to the design of all of this, right? To the hilarity of what it is <laughs> to have incarnated for this human journey. And you can simply say, listen, this is not for me. I want something else. So about, I would say two years ago now, I started to do this uh, inner and outer work of recognizing that I could be, you know, like protesting and whining and angry and upset and my heart racing like all day long about like everything that was going wrong. And if you followed my journey, you know, I did do that, um, which has um, earned me some very significant deplatforming uh, <laughs> credits and uh, awards. And it was probably, I would say, I don't know, about a year and a half ago that I started to recognize that there's another way, that this is an inside job, and that we are probably just fueling the fire and adding to that which we are insisting should change by empowering the so-called enemy. I've called it like the erotic caress, right? Like think about the truthers and activists that you know, and think about how much of their day they are obsessing about the enemy, right? They're like reading news feeds and like can't wait to like figure out like what their opinion should be on how bad things are, okay? I'm not interested in that any longer and I'm working very hard in my life to get coherent. So I also have two daughters, and I know that this is not um, a perspective that they're going to encounter very easily. So a couple of years ago, I set out to tap all of the folks that I know are living this way. And honestly, there aren't many, <laughs> there aren't many. However, I'm attracting more and more and more into my field and I am growing this network of people who I believe transmit this version of sovereignty and empowerment. So I started interviewing these folks 
and I have collected these interviews into what I'm calling a living library because I intend to keep doing this and growing this library until I feel satisfied that I can hand this over literally to my children and say, here's what you're not gonna learn elsewhere about how to hold on to your innate power, right? And so I have done a lot of these interviews and I have collected resources and it's not like, oh, here's how to be healthy. That's not the point of this uh, collection. The point of this is here is how to connect all of these dots. Because I have found that dot connecting, right? Understanding and recognizing patterns in many different arenas, right? Oh, this is how the agricultural system does this. This is how the financial system does this. This is how the legal system and the medical system. And what about those seven sciences that we were brainwashed with in elementary school? How much of that is actually true, right? How deeply can we question? And when we start to question this deeply, what happens then? Who holds us then? What do we do? Right? And so I have created what I think is um, a beautiful fabric of this kind of exploration and a, a bit of a start here. Right? So I'm not providing the answers. I am mostly helping you to support the logical and rational exploration of these questions. And that's what I found is that when you can't think clearly and when you can't think freely, and there are many reasons why we can't, most of which have to do with our trauma, right? When you can't, you simply are unable to ask questions, right? So those are the folks that we've all interacted with. You know, they can ask questions about certain things, but don't go over there, right? Like don't ask that question, right? Whether it's Again, I don't even know what words I'm allowed to say here. Um, you know, whether it's about um, contagion and infection, um, whether it's about the shape of the planet, whether it's about evolution and where we came from, whether it's about history, right? So I have put my inquiry into these three different boxes. One is this outer exploration. How do we ask these big questions? Because, uh, you know, when I started to explore deeper beyond medicine and health, which is obviously where I've been focused for a while. I found the same patterns everywhere I asked. And I found that what I had been shown through mainstream media, you know, even from like the days of the Challenger explosion, you know, back in school, um, was something I needed to unpack and apply a different lens. Now that I understand what's going on <laughs> to some extent, right? So a lot of this, these deceptions and a lot of this myth busting, it can go, I mean, it's a huge rabbit hole, right? And there's many, many offshoots of this rabbit hole. This is a place to start to begin to ask these big questions. And so there's outer exploration, but you can't even get to the outer exploration if you're not able to do the inner exploration. And so I have provided um, in this collection the tools that I feel are really essential uh, for holding yourself through a lot of this, these seemingly controversial um, places. Um, I include what I'm like sort of questioning maybe to an overshare, right? Maybe a too vulnerable share of a recorded session, personal session that I did, um, therapy session of parts work so that you can really see because I'm very passionate about family constellation and parts work as being a very rapid and powerful way out of your fragmented and disconnected uh, warring dimensions inside. Um, and I also um, include what was the beginning of this series, like the real inspiration for it, which is the um, homesteading, right? So, so what is it to walk the walk, right? So you say, I don't like how this system is operating, but you're still, you know, going to Whole Foods and you're still on your smartphone and you're still running to the doctor in emergency room whenever you got a thing and, you know, there isn't a relationship to your needs and dependencies that is evolving into a sense of sovereignty. And honestly, not so that you can say like, mm, I'm out of this system, but so that you can start to cultivate like a root chakra sense of I've got me. I think that's really essential right now. 
We want some, I long for someone to get me, trust me, in my business, in my personal romantic life. Like, I just want to feel like, Kelly, I got you. <laughs> I got to, I, that is a very, very powerful desire. I bet we all have. However, it starts with getting yourself, holding yourself, being with yourself, being present to yourself. And having that really unconditional allegiance to whatever it is that you represent, wherever it is that you are in your process and your journey, and being the, the energy that contains yourself. So when you start to grow your own food, when you start to, if you eat you know, eggs, let's say, raise your own chickens, which has been one of the deepest spiritual journeys of my entire life, raising chickens, and I detail how to do that, if that turns you on, um, in this series with videos of my girls, um, meaning my hen girls. Um, and, you know, when you just even learn about what it is to get off a smartphone, right? When you learn what it is to fill a cabinet full of the things, you know, the natural medicine tools that you might need so that you have something to offer yourself and your family if the thing arises, right? The urinary tract thing or the bronchial thing or the skin thing. And you collect these resources, something in you can exhale. Even if honestly you don't take action yet, we just know it's there, right? So that was really my intention with this collection and I'm growing it. I just did an interview yesterday, two days ago, um, with the gentleman that I am working with to, let's see how I can phrase this on this platform, um, to restructure my uh, relationship to the le legal system and the uh, economic system so that I can move into the private. And I'm about nine months into that journey and I have vetted many different options. And this is the one I'm going with and I'm feeling already super empowered and super excited about the changes that I've made. That honestly, I never saw myself because I was like, oh, a man's gonna take care of this for me, kind of a thing. And as it should you know, um, unfold uh, for the, for optimal delight, it's my job <laughs> to take care of this for me. And I have been very impressed with myself and my capacity to, um, to really learn what it takes to uh, move into a, a status that is a reclamation of the power that we've always honestly been offered. I mean, that's the big reveal of all of this is like the path has always been there for us to claim and own the power that we know on some level is ours. And without these examples of people who are being this way already, it's very hard to imagine accessing, right? Even the beginning. So it's like the, this process of readying to step into this power, I think it requires inspiration. It requires seeing um, people who are already doing it, feeling it, being it. And then you can expand into when is the right time for you. So we have put all of this together. Um, and as I said, it's a living library, so I'll be adding to it uh, over time. And if you are interested in having this library for you or your family, when you purchase it, you get access to whatever it is that I add to it forever, <laughs> for the future, right? As long as um, I am creating, which I see going on for some time longer. So. I wanted to introduce that um, to you all, and I can certainly say if you have any any questions. However, uh, the link is pinned, and we are, so I thought a lot about um, how to value this, right? Because as a living library that goes on, I mean, I've never seen somebody offer something like this that is like ongoing necessarily. Um, I'm sure people have, but um, it's, it's a relationship that we're building, right? About this path that I am walking and, um, the one of the superpowers I have, which is to attract the right folks into my field to provide inspiration, containment, and resources at the right time. And so we have tried to our best to make this as accessible as possible and are um, offering $100 towards the price until Wednesday, uh, the 14th. So if that is appealing, wonderful. Um, it will also just be available, you know, evergreen as it's called. So whenever the spirit moves you and 
I am um, deeply invested in supporting those of you who can connect these kinds of dots, um, all of these different dots, whether it's you know inner emotional and trauma work, whether it's living the life, like actually walking the walk of what it is to move in the direction of sovereignty and as Bucky Fuller says, creating the new world that renders the current obsolete, right? That's what we can do. We don't have to fight this. We don't have to give this our energy. And that is not to suggest that you should not be aware, right? And that you should not be, you know, offering the, the lifescape your attention. It simply means that when it comes down to the power that you have, it is in your choice. It is in your choice, right? So how do you make these choices? What does that even mean? And um, that's really what I am aiming to support in this series um, of, of whomever is willing and open and ready to see that there are so many layers of this deception. It's almost funny. And that's the point that I got to. Um, I don't know, I would say like a year or so ago, uh, after some of the big reveals, and there are three interviews in this um, collection of topics I have never spoken about publicly, and, and may not for a while, um, because I do believe that, you know, there's, there's certain things that are for a private space, and uh, yeah, and, and I got to the point after this level of deep inquiry, like probably what I would call the biggest psyop of all, um, which is not the one most people are paying attention to at the moment. And once I got through, you know, I don't know, a couple thousand hours of researching that, um, things started to be funny to me. I started to laugh every time I would speak to, you know, one of my colleagues in this collection and or, or others um, in my sort of network. And I would learn about like one other lie, right? Like one other deception or like one other way that I was consenting to contracting with and participating in my own subjugation and honestly enslavement. And I don't know why I actually enjoy this process now, but I find it, I find it like amusing and entertaining every time I encounter another, oh my God, are you serious? That too? That was a lie too? That's a deception too? And uh, so I will continue to collect them here because I like things in, I mean, that's why I write books. Like I like things in coherent packages. So that is that. Okay, so somebody is asking, is this included? So this is, um, was formerly included. We have VLP legacy members. So our my um, membership is called Vital Life Project. And this was included and now we've decided to make it a separate offering. So that's why because it's a lot of content and I want the focus to really be the people who are interested in this library to really have like, you know, sort of a space around dedicating their attention to the Sovereignty series. Um, and VLP is now primarily focused on the lived experience of connecting and living this life. So if you're turned on by the Sovereignty series and that works for you and you're like, okay, I wanna be around other people who connect these dots, because honestly, I don't know of another community that is quite this vibe, right? So, has, you know, that is able to work with all of these different concepts at once. And, you know, this is one of the aspects of my core woundology, which is like that I'm too much, right? That, that like, just pick a, pick one topic, Kelly, like make it like simple, right? Why do you, why you gotta do all the things? And I do have to do all the things. So here's all the things that I care about and they're on many, many different subjects, right? But they have one thing in common. And this reclamation thread, whether it's from how you bank to how you eat, to how you relate, to how you embody, honestly, it, it all is the same pattern over and over and over again. So in Vital Life Project, we live this life. We connect you to each other um, and the Sovereignty Series is now separate. So thank you for asking for that clarification. I'm trying to make everything a bit more clearer in the future, working on that. Um, okay, so let's see. If there are any other questions I can... Um, answer. Oh, okay, great question. Somebody's asking if it's relevant um, to other countries. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, there's nothing that is America-centric um, in this series. 
and even the um, trust-based solutions that I, you know, just um, did. I did one of the first interviews that have ever been done um, with this gentleman, and um, even that will have a translation to um, other countries. So, yeah, no, I don't think um, any of this is America-centric. So let's see. Although I will say, you know, like I'm thinking about my chickens, like I provide some resources that may be more uh, like, you know, websites and stuff, but honestly, those are easily extrapolated. So this is really just to model what it looks like to engage these different threads. Somebody's asking, this is maybe a semi-related question, but I really like this topic. Um, Subtle Yoga is asking about interconnectedness and interdependency. So I have had so many experiences over the past, I would say, five or so years of recognizing where I have been projecting idealization, right? So fueling a positive um, empowerment of a person. It's usually been a person, um, but I've even had this experience in like a friend group or communities locally where I am offering my energy, right? So my positivistic energy and I'm imagining that I'm getting something from this source that I can only get from this source. And then when there's a rupture of some kind that pierces that, that pokes a hole in that, I can actually see with sober eyes who's in front of me. And I often, if not always, have come to the conclusion that I don't actually even want it. I don't actually even like it. I don't actually even relate in the way that I thought I did to what it is that I was formerly imagining I couldn't live without. That is dependency. And what happens with dependency is not only can you not see clearly, you also need to control. You need to micromanage. And you need that person or that group that you are imagining you're dependent on. Right, so this could be like your kids are at a great school and you like can't imagine what you would do if they weren't at that school. Or it could be your primary relationship or it could be a friend group or an organization or a community. Um, when you can't imagine how you would live without it, that's a red flag <laughs> because you can always live without it. And that dependency ultimately is a distortion of the potential between the two people, and it keeps, let's say it's two people, it keeps you tethered longer than is probably beneficial for either of you and your respective evolution. So interconnectedness is the, again, the sober assessment of who's in front of you and the recognition that there's no role for disappointment and resentment in these kinds of dynamics. Once you recognize what Somebody is actually offering you, right? Once you can actually see what's on offer, then you can say, is this for me or not? And you don't need to punish them when they disappoint you. When somebody betrays you or disappoints you, it's probably because you weren't able or willing to see what they already showed you about who they are. You needed them to be what you wanted them to be. That's actually aggression, right? Could it actually even be abuse? And you may be experiencing yourself as the one who is being abused. So these dynamics, you know, I've made videos about the relationship between like medical tyranny and narcissism. And, you know, these dynamics are up for transformation right now. And that's why, to my mind, if you just focus on your dissatisfaction with what is, whether it's in a relationship or with a system, you're really, um, you're, you're, you're missing a very profound opportunity to feel better. <laughs> it's kind of that simple. And that's why, you know, in this, um, in this series, I've tried to focus on the things that help me feel better. Actually, when I have moved through some of these deceptions, I feel excited, you know, and it doesn't mean that it wasn't scary, you know. Um, however, when you move in this direction, it often feels like relief. It feels like coherence. It feels like, oh, wow, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And it's actually fun. And so that, um, that reclamation of, I have choice. I always will be able to discern whether something is for me or not, um, is part of how you 
you send your nervous system this signal of safety. And I do think having these kinds of resources, I don't know, I wish somebody um, had offered me this, this library a couple of years ago. It would have um, probably saved me a lot of, um, you know, fear-based grasping at what to do about, you know, um, how confusing everything was or felt anyway at the time. All right, so let's see. Okay. All right, cool. I don't see any other real questions. So um, we will be, I don't know if y'all can even see my posts and account because sometimes there's like four people there. Um, thanks, shadow banning. So uh, we will be posting little clips of some of my favorite moments and some of the folks that I am also really excited, like my friend um, Steve Young, who is a physicist who has validated so much of the research that I've done on cosmology and so much of the myth busting that I have. Um, you know, I spent all of these hours researching and then I met him and I was like, yes, I knew I was on something and you know it's just fun right like as a psychiatrist I have a special capacity to offer a perspective on what some of the myths deceptions and lies around psychiatry and the promises therein are right and that doesn't mean everybody else can't discover those things it just mean, means I have a special insider view right and so um, he is that for this subject um, which honestly impacts so much more of your life than you might imagine um, the way we think about this realm and a lot of the assumptions that are are being made so um you know he doesn't ha he's he's about to start building a platform and so this um interview is one of the first um that's really out there and i'm super excited to put him and others that i just so admire um on the map and into your field of awareness if you're not already familiar with them and let's see okay cool i think that is it um, okay, cool. Let's see if there are any here. Oh, okay. Somebody is asking what a psyop is. That's like my favorite word. Um, okay, so a psyop, just briefly, <laughs> I'll just end on this note, is a psychological operation. And it is one of, again, this is a little challenging to speak on these platforms about this subject, which is why I created this library, because <laughs> enough already. Can I just say what I want to say, please, somewhere? And I figured out how to do it, you know, and that's what I put together in this library. So I will try to be as high level while also being informative on this platform, which is not hospitable to this, these subjects. I mean, it's just, that's just the fact. And that's cool. You know, it's their playground. I'm in their playground right now, speaking to you all. So um, if you want to know the games I like to play, you gotta come to my playground. I mean, that's just, it's kind of cool, right? In, in some light, all of this um, censorship has really put us in a position, like I get to invite you over to my house and I get to like show you the movies that I wanna show you. And if you wanna come to my house, cool. If you don't, you can stay you know, outside or at somebody else's house. So there is something organizing about all of this. And that's not to say that it isn't frustrating, um, demoralizing, and even scary. So um, a psycho psychological operation is, um, is a strategic effort to use trauma-based mind control to influence the public perception, specifically to generate fear anxiety, a sense of powerlessness, and to put the public into their fight or flight patterning so that whatever is then offered as the solution or the path um, or you know the way out of this particular problem um, or version of reality that is presented by the mainstream media is adopted easily, effortlessly. And so there are many examples of that. Um, these operations include what are called false flags. Again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just gonna shut up <laughs> soon. 
the, what are called false flags, which are theatrical events um, that masquerade as actual news and things that have actually occurred um, that haven't, right? Where there's actors involved and screens involved and CGI involved. Um, it can also include, you know, the ways in which certain um, organizations um, and systems are bought and controlled um, when they appear to be free agents, you know, um, disseminating, you know, information for the masses. Um, so there's a whole web of how these operations unfold. Uh, and it's, it's honestly, it's, you become able to recognize patterns so that you don't take the bait. A lot of what I would like to help empower you around is how to stay with yourself back here, like in your, you know, strong spine energy so that you never take the bait of the very real fear that you've been conditioned around. And taking the bait looks like, right? It looks like up here, you know, like prey energy. And I want you in your predator, right? And when you're in your predator, you can discern and you don't take the bait. You don't take the bait and you don't give your energy. Your discretion is around your attention and your energy. This is actually, I, I described, I'm very interested in polarity dynamics. This is the masculine, right? And we all need this. We need a healthy masculine that is self-contained, that is unflappable, and that can see, you know, whatever is the nonsense in front of them and can navigate and put one foot in front of the other effectively, right? For yourself, for your family, whatever. So this is how to grow that spine it requires like seeing all these dots connected and it requires um, understanding the patterns of so many of these psychological oper operations. It's the same thing over and over. It's like a rinse and repeat. That's why honestly, like I don't pay attention any longer to what is going on and it has become increasingly irrelevant um, to my lifescape. And as I shift my internal ecology, um, I shift and expand my awareness I can rest more in this place where I can engage or not, right? I have choice, I have choice. I've, I've reclaimed that power of choice. And that's true again on the relationship level, on the relational level, and also on the intellectual level. And so um, this is really meant to be, you know, I have a recording in there uh, called Anatomy of a PSYOP. And it's like, you know, what are the big ones <laughs> that you might wanna consider, right? What are the big ones that you might wanna know about? Okay, so. Let's see, I think I have said enough. Um, okay, cool, I think we're good on that. All right, my loves, so check it out. Um, you can also just go to Kelly Brogan MD if you miss the link, it's in, although apparently my link in bio is like, mm, questionably functionable, functional, functional. Um, so anyway, you can just go to Kelly Brogan MD and it's in the banner up there um, to find it or under programs. And I have um, a secret, not so secret desire for lots of y'all to check this out because it will grow the field of this level of inquiry, awareness, and then I don't have to be so lonely <laughs> with me and my few friends who seem to get it. <laughs> so come join us. Stand with me, be with me, and walk with me, and I will see you all soon.